the Blood Squad, it's your girl Chloe Yasmin, back in the cup with another video, you feel me? Alright, so in today's video, as you guys can tell by the title, we are going to be covering this topic or this question about is Jesus God? Alright, so basically before I hop into this video, I just want to say that if you disagree with anything that I'm saying and you feel like any anger towards me, um, this has nothing to do with me or Jesus. It has something to do with you. So all you have to do is click off my video. You know, I don't have a problem with you clicking off, unsubscribing, disliking the video. I honestly do not have a problem with that. My purpose is just to put out the word of God. And I'm honestly not even saying that to be petty. I'm really not. I'm just saying, like, I'm just speaking the truth. Like, I don't have a problem with people unsubscribing. I don't have a problem with people disliking my videos. I honestly do not have a problem. I just believe that Jesus will send the right people to me and the right people that want to subscribe and hear the word of God. I believe that so you know like I said if you have a problem with that all you have to do is you know click off of this video unsubscribe dislike it whatever you need to do to make yourself feel better anyway but I'm sure most of you guys are noticing like girl your hair is straightened yes my hair is straightened it looks definitely totally different with my hair being straightened right here this part never gets straight because it's my colic so it like never gets straight after you straighten it it'll be straightened for like a few seconds and it'll literally curl like not curl back up but it'll wave up because as you guys know I have curls but it won't curl up it'll basically just wave up or it'll be like a super like loose type curl but anyway with all of that being said I'm going to hop into today's subject or today's topic um Let's just hop into it. Okay, you guys, so another thing that I want to say is that everything is coming straight from the Bible. This is not coming just from me. This is coming straight from God's word. This is not coming from some made-up thing that I wanted to make up. This is not coming from somebody's made-up, imaginary, anything. This is literally straight from the word of God. So you can actually pull up every single scripture that I'm going to mention, and it is going to be there. So I have actually been doing a lot of research on this. It's definitely not something that I just decided to, like, out of nowhere do. I've been researching this for the past well honestly I've been doing research on this for like for like about a year but for the past week I have been doing more and more research guys I need you to be quiet I'm trying to film you guys my brothers constantly play video games so if you're here in that sis that's exactly what it is but anyway you feel me I'm about to hop right into what I'm gonna be talking about but what I was saying was Oh yeah, I have been researching this for like the past week more than I ever have. So I know a lot of you guys are just wanting the answer right off the bat. And I'm just going to say it right off the bat that Jesus is God. And I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up what I just said with the scriptures that I have right here. So basically the first scripture is John. If you guys, if I keep touching my hair, um, it's, I guess it's a little bit different to film with straight hair. So I just keep touching it. But, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no. Um, if I keep touching my hair, just don't mind it, you know, I'm just touching my hair because this side is like so much more straight than this side because of my colic and stuff. So anyway, let's hop into this. So basically the first scripture is 1030 and it says, I and the father are one. Now that is said by Jesus Christ himself. So basically when he said that, he is saying that him and God are equal. So they're no, they're not separate, they're equal. So with that being said, Jesus is God because He's not separate from God. Jesus and the Father are one. So him and God are one, meaning that Jesus is God. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, basically, how am I going to explain this? So basically, you cannot say that Jesus and God are different. You cannot say that because he clearly stated that him and God are one. Meaning that if he's equal to God, then that means that he is God. And we are also going to be talking about why the name of Jesus is so powerful. I forgot to mention that in the beginning of the video. But basically we are also going to be covering why the name of Jesus is so powerful and why we should be saying the name of Jesus. So basically I just want to say that, you know, there's a song called, um, something about the name Jesus by the Allen Group, I believe. And basically in the beginning of the, um, song he said, we are living in a time of day where everybody loves to say the, word, the name God, but nobody wants to say the name of Jesus. You barely ever hear that. You rarely hear that because people do not want to offend, you know, Muslims. People do not want to offend Jews. People do not want to offend people that are worshiping so-called other, other gods. But Philippians 2.10 clearly states that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth in under the earth so everybody on earth everybody in heaven and everybody under the earth is going there's going to come a day where every knee is going to have to bow at the name of jesus now i also have this scripture titus 2 13 states 
while we wait for the blessed hope that appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it clearly says right here, great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because it is saying that he is our great God and he is our Savior. Now, a lot of people may argue, like, how can he be God if he's a man? How can he, you know, how is that possible? That is because in the Bible, it clearly states that Jesus has two natures. He is God and he is man. Now, the reason why it says that is because he is not a female. He is a man. And the Bible also says that God made man in his own image. So God is not a woman. God is a man. Jesus also said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So with that being said, if you've seen Jesus, you have seen God. Now, what is that saying? If you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. Now, if you think about that and you process that and you add that up, it's basically saying what it is saying, that Jesus is God. Because if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. Matthew 1, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, that can be very confusing to some people because they're like, is his name Jesus? Why is it saying that they will call him Emmanuel? Now, basically, Emmanuel just means God with us. So that's what he will be called. He will be called God with us, but that's not what he will be named. Now, a lot of people may argue with that because in the beginning, I was very confused about it too. I did some research on it and it's basically saying, you know how people, you know, you know, be like, you know how people be like, you know, this person will be, this person is called this, but their name is this. Like, hmm. Like, let's say, let's say there's a basketball player and they call him, you know, let's say they call him like the best shooter because he's like the best at shooting the ball. But his real name is like, I don't know, like LeBron James or something, you know what I mean? So he'll be called like the best shooter, but his name is LeBron James. Now, do not get me wrong, sis. Do not get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying that LeBron James and Jesus are the same. I'm not saying that they're equal at all because I'm definitely not saying that because Jesus created LeBron. And he's given him the talent that he has. But I'm saying, like, he will be called God with us because Jesus is God with us. Jesus is God in human flesh. But his name is Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For to us, us child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. It clearly says that he will be called Mighty God. Now, if you also think about this as well, God conceived Mary with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. So when he conceived her with the Holy Spirit, she gave birth to Jesus. Meaning that Jesus is God because God took his self and put it into Mary and she had Jesus. So what is that saying? That is saying that Jesus is God. And also when he's saying I and the Father are one. Now I've had a lot of questions um, about, you know, why we pray in the name of Jesus and why I'm not saying that it. You know, a lot of people have asked me, why is it so bad to say God? I'm not saying that it's bad, but you cannot get to him unless you pray in the name of Jesus. Because right here it says, John 14, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So when you pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you are going to God. And Jesus and God are one, meaning that Jesus is is God. So we have to pray in Jesus name, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the powerful name of Jesus. John 14, 14. Yes, ask anything using my name and I will do it. Ask anything using Jesus's holy, powerful, mighty name and he will do it. So when you pray, Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. No other name can forgive your sins or deliver you from them. So when you wake up in the morning, say, I repent of the sins that I know that I did, and I repent of the sins that I do not know that I did, in the mighty name of Jesus. John 3, 5, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water in the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, unless you are baptized in the name of Jesus, you cannot enter heaven. 
So I really, 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 really suggest you guys, and I'm please asking you guys to please get baptized in the name of Jesus so that we can all go to heaven together, so that we can all enter the kingdom, the kingdom of God and be happy and, and live happily ever after forever and have happiness forever. Please get baptized in the mighty name of Jesus. Please. And also, please obey him. All right, you guys. So I'm sorry if the angle just changed. I actually just had to go look up a scripture really, really quickly because I actually wrote down this scripture and it's not in my notes. And I can't understand why, but it's confusing. It, it can also be frustrating when, you know, you have, you know, these scriptures written down. You can't find the specific scripture that you really wanted to share. So anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share this scripture. So this right here is just going to let you know how powerful the name of Jesus is. So it says, um, it is Luke 10, 17. When the 70 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him. They joyfully, they joyfully reported to Jesus. This is exactly what they said to Jesus. I'm sorry if I'm stuttering. Even the demons obey us when we use your name. Even demons obey us when we use Jesus's powerful, mighty name. All right, so basically when bad things are going on, or when you just feel something, even in yourself, like a demon just jumps into you and you feel it. Or if a demon is using somebody else, you can rebuke that demon in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I rebuke you, demon, in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke you, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus. And that demon has to go. Why? Because that name of Jesus is so powerful. So it's kind of like when you put a chemical on something and it melts, that chemical just melts them away. It's like that. When you use the name of Jesus, they're just, they go away, they flee. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus and they flee at the name of Jesus. They cannot stand the name of Jesus. So let's say you're in church or you're hearing somebody preach about the word of God. So let's say you're hearing me preach about the word of God right now and you're hearing me say the name of Jesus. If you're mad about it, there was a demon in you. There's a demon using you. The devil is lying to you. He's whispering in your ear. You cannot let that happen. Rebuke the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The devil doesn't love you. He hates you. He wants you dead. He wants you destroyed. He wants to ruin your life. So any chance he gets, he's going to whisper in your ear. Now I'm going to say this right now and I'm telling them 100% truth. The devil's not stupid. He's not stupid at all. He may be evil, but he's not stupid. The devil knows how to trick you to get you to do things that you know you have no business doing. The devil knows what to use to get you to feel bad. He knows what lie to put in your head. He knows what to do to get you misconstrued and get you to be sad and get you to be angry and get you to pop off at somebody that may need a blessing, that may need, that may need you to preach the word of God to them. To them. He's seen plenty of Chloe as means. He's seen plenty of yous. He's seen plenty of you same type of people on here same same type of people that is watching this video you he's seen plenty of you the devil has been here for millions and millions of years he's been here for so long he's seen so many people he's ruined so many people's lives he's used he's used the same lies that he is using on you he's used the same things that you may have addictions with he's, he's used that same thing on other people because he's seen the same type of people as you the same type of people that's, that's had a personality like you he knows what you struggle with that's why the bible tells us to be silent because we cannot let the devil know what's going on in our mind we cannot let the devil know what's going on he cannot read your mind but he can put things in your mind. The Bible also says, it's John 14, 12, 13. It states that we can do, okay, so anyone believing in Jesus shall do the same miracles he has done and even greater ones. So if we believe in Jesus and have faith in him and use his name, we can do miracles just like he did and even greater ones. So if somebody is sick by praying on them and believing in Jesus and using his mighty name, that person can be healed. So let's say somebody has cancer. Let's say the doctor is telling that person that you're going to die in this amount of weeks and this amount of days and this amount of months. If we pray on that person and we have that faith and we use his mighty name, that person can be healed. That person can live for years and years and years and years and years. So if we just believe in him and have faith, we can perform great miracles. But we are not to say that we, you know, we did that. You know, I healed this person, I healed this person. No, 
Jesus healed that person, but we have the power if we use his name and we believe in him to make it happen. Like how would I sound right now if I prayed over a family member and they had cancer and they were healed by Jesus and I walk around saying that I healed this person, I healed this person, no. All the credit belongs to Jesus. All the victory belongs to Jesus. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority, which is the power, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So all the power has been given to Jesus. That's why his name is so powerful, because he has the power. He has all the power. That's why we have to use Jesus' name. There is so much power in the name of Jesus. Like, I, I can't explain it. But there is so much power in that name of Jesus. My battery is actually about to die, so I actually need to kind of hurry this up. But I'm not even going to hold you guys up. I feel Jesus' presence with me right now. I feel Jesus right now. I feel that he is here with me. So before I get out of here, I actually just want to say that I want you to try. I just want you to try using Jesus' name and living for Jesus and see what he will do. I want you to try. Just do it. Because I can promise you that Jesus will bless you and he will perform miracles on you. Pray to Jesus and ask him, Lord Jesus, please show me that you are here with me, that you love me, that you, because I know a lot of people struggle with knowing that Jesus is real. Just, Jesus, please show me that you are real and he will show you because he showed me. A lot of people may think that Chloe has means so perfect, this and this and that. She's never done this, she's never done that. No. I'm not going to sit up your neck like I'm perfect. I'm not going to do that. Why? Because what's the point? I need to share my testimony. I have done, I have committed so many sins. I have done so many bad things. I have done just very bad things that the Lord does not approve of. But as the Bible says, Jesus does not treat us as our sins deserve. He has blessed me so much. As soon as I gave my life to Jesus, he literally just, my life just totally changed. My family's life totally changed changed i'm telling you guys like I, I i'm not perfect i still sin to this day i'm still a sinner we are all sinners i still sin till this day i have a temper i have a mouth on me you know i have sometimes i have problems with gossiping i have problems with a lot of different things that i'm still working on because i'm not perfect and let me tell you something jesus does not expect us to be perfect he does not expect you to be perfect. So do not think that you have to be perfect in order to preach the word of God. You do not have to be perfect, but you also don't try to act like you're perfect. But I definitely need to make it like a whole another video because I do not want this video to be too long. But I'm just wanna, I just want to let you guys know that I'm not perfect. I'm going to share my sins with you guys because I want to let you know that I'm not perfect. I'm a changed person today. That's my past. We all have past. So if you have your past, oh, well, I'm not judging you, sis. You, you have a future. You have a purpose. You are put here for a reason. And guess what? What the devil used for your bad ends up being for your good. So now to this day I'm able to, not till this day but to this day and forever and ever I will be able to preach the word of God and tell you guys what I've been through and tell you guys my sins why and I'll be able to preach certain things why because I've been through it and I know what it is and I know those thoughts so what the devil used for my bad all those sins that I have you know committed and done it has been used for my good because now I'm able to preach about it. But anyway, with that being said, sis, I love every single one of you guys. I really, really do. God bless every single one of you guys in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to get this video up as soon as possible. I know I talk really, really fast, but I filmed straight after school. I've been working all day in school and I decided to cop on here and work a little bit more and be a fisherman for soul. So I love every single one of you guys in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep living for Jesus. Even if you, even if you, you fail so many times and you feel like Jesus doesn't love you and he doesn't, want you to live for him anymore that's a lie that's the devil's lie right there do not listen to that jesus loves you remember that he loves you even through your sins we are all sinners equal remember that as well and i love every single one of you guys I'm gonna hit up body here you feel me hey bye y'all i love y'all <laughs>